Fed Chair Jay Powell set to go before Congress for the second time uh, this week. Today he's going to testify before the Senate Banking Committee. Here with her takeaways and expectations is Priya Misra. She's fixed income portfolio manager at J.P. Morgan uh, Asset Management. So will it be any different than what we heard yesterday? And, and what did we hear yesterday in your view? So I don't think it'll be all that different. I think uh, what we heard yesterday, I think it was actually more interesting what Chair Powell did not say. He did not talk about a reacceleration. He did not talk about inflation being too high. He, he did not talk about rate hikes. I think what he talked about is rate cuts are still on the table for this year, later this year. I think he's, he's trying to retain optionality. So whether they cut in May or June or July actually doesn't matter. I think the market's been focused on, you know, do these rate cuts happen? Can that soft landing continue? I think the entire soft landing is predicated on the Fed cutting rates. And I think Chair Powell said, yeah, sure, we're going to cut rates. We need a little bit more data. I also think it was interesting. He didn't say they need better data on inflation. They need a little bit more of the same data. So if, as long as inflation heads lower, it's not going to be a straight line down. The Fed's cutting rates, so I think every market really cheered, and I think that makes sense. The soft landing is predicated on cuts. Why? Uh, things seem to be going pretty well uh, right now. It's a fair point, but, you know, monetary policy works with a lag. I think when we look at parts of the consumer sector, you know, the overall consumer is okay. You look at lower-end consumers, I think that, that uh, you know, credit card debt is growing. That credit card debt is pretty high with interest rates where they are. I think there's a lot of debate, what is neutral rate? You know, the Fed thinks two and a half. I might be more in the three, three and a half level. Where is Fed funds? Five and a half. So I think it's going to get much harder next year. Is the Fed cutting all the way to two and a half or do they stop at three? I think that's a good question, but we're at five and a half. I think policy is restrictive and the Fed can start and the earlier they start, the more methodical they can be, they can cut at 25, you know, sort of communicate that it's a gradual easing cycle. I would argue policy is restrictive. It really? just takes a while for it to show up in, in the economic data. So it's, it's the old uh, lag argument, and you believe that, that there is a lag. When will we, will we see any evidence of, of your lag tomorrow? I think the labor market, yes. I, th I, I do think that the last payroll report was very high. I think, uh, you know, the, the December-January data is often impacted by seasonals, by weather issues. People couldn't show up to work. So I do think you'll see a slowing. You know, for us to see the policies that restrictive, I think you need below 100,000 payrolls. I don't think you just you see that yet. And when we look at hiring intentions, we're thinking 100 to 200,000 is consistent with a soft landing. So things are slowing. I'm not saying we're in a recession, but, you know, recessions are non-linear. And the Fed has to be nervous that you suddenly see a pullback in hiring intentions and then things start to move higher. And then if they start to cut rates, that takes a while as well. So let's start easing off a little bit in terms of they're normalizing. I don't think they're easing policy. You have to cut a lot more if they want to ease. So they're just trying to, you know, keep the soft landing. I think we're in a soft landing right now. Keep that going. Start to cut rates later this year. Go slow. So I, I do think that that labor report, that all-important uh, labor report, is going to show some slowing. I don't think you see another 300,000 uh, jobs. What if you're wrong about, about the lag? And, and what, what if we don't see? Uh, and is it, I mean, Waller recently has said maybe we don't need higher unemployment as, as an indicator that we've been effective in slowing things down. Maybe inflation comes down for, for whatever reason. We continue to have a strong labor market, but the Fed theoretically could still ease. But why would it? They would ease for inflation reasons. And I think that's... What do you mean for inflation? Why do you ease for inflation? That doesn't, that, you, you tighten for inflation. No, that's, but, you know, when inflation was 5 6%, depending on yeah. which metric you look at, inflation was 5 6 9% a, a year uh, or two ago, it's at running at 3 So real rates, you know, most of us, we don't think about real rates, but how do companies respond? If I'm able to charge more prices, then I can actually, you know, pay higher interest rates. If my pricing power is coming down, that high nominal interest rates, the interest rates we see are all nominal, but I think the Fed thinks of policy in real terms. We all respond, maybe unconsciously, in real terms. If I'm earning more, well, I can pay more at the grocery store. As these wages, and, and uh, since you brought up the, the jobs report tomorrow, that wages number is extremely important. That's been coming off. Now, last month came in uh, very hot. I think that was a weather impact. But if that starts to come down, that's why the Fed cuts rates. They look at real rates. Real rates are very high, I think, very restrictive. It just is not really? showing ADP, up. ADP, the, the wages were up. 
yesterday. Right? Wages were hot yesterday. They and, are and less hot than they were last year because inflation is still okay. high. So it, it, with what the Fed would like to do is keep interest rates tethered to, to the inflation rate. So even though some people think we could normalize back to 6, 7, 8 percent like we've had for 50 years or, or, or at different periods, you think that it's tethered. To, if it's 2 percent inflation, you get rates that exactly where they should be based on inflation and let, let the good times roll, let the party go. Well, I think you can start the normalizing. That end point is very tricky. I mean, yep. does, the, does the Fed end at two, two and a half, or do they end at the markets saying three and a half? I think three and a half is fair. If we've had a productivity boom, I think you can argue that those real okay. equilibrium rates are a little higher. I don't think they're at 3% right now.